Hi everybody, it's good to be with you again. I'm at a beautiful setting this week. I'm at the Hamilton Winery and I wanna just thank, uh, give a thank you to Russ and Stacy Hamilton for allowing me to, to be here. You'll know why I'm here. This week we're gonna be studying uh, the, the presence of God from John chapter 15 where Jesus proclaims, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so I want to read that text this morning, if it's morning with you or afternoon or evening perhaps from John 15. It's, it's Monday the 18th of May. So I'm going to read the whole chapter and then we're going to take a look at, at four uh, people or people groups in the next five days. Today we'll be focusing on the gardener, tomorrow Tuesday on the vine, Wednesday the branches, Thursday the vineyard, and Friday the advocate, which will conclude chapter 15. It's good to be here. It's good to be with you. And so Jesus said in the upper room when he's with the disciples, because we remember that John chapter 13 through 17, all of those chapters deal with Jesus in the upper room. And so John 15 is, is part of that discourse, Jesus with the disciples on that night in which he was betrayed. So he says to them, and you can imagine maybe as they're in that upper room, remembering and celebrating the Passover, that, that wine would be on their mind. This is the same night that, that Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them to drink, instituting our sacrament of Holy Communion. So Jesus says to them using this imagery, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that you, your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would, be, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is no greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates my father as well. If I had not done anything among them, then the works no one else did, they would be not be guilty of sin. 
as it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what was written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. This chapter is packed, chock full of stuff. Great teachings of Jesus. Jesus begins in verse 1 by setting up relationships. He says, I am the true vine, setting himself up as the, as the vine to which the branches are attached. And my father is the gardener. And the gardener's relationship to the vine is, found in verse 2, is that he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. God the Father as, as gardener is the image Jesus has here, the one that tends the vine and the branches, the one who is responsible for the, for the vineyard, the one who gives life to the vine, and the one who gives life then through the vine to the branches. And then in verse 3, Jesus talks about this relationship we already have with the gardener through him, the vine. You are already, this past action, it's done, it's complete. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. And here's the presence part, verse 4, remain in me. That means to abide or be present in me as I also remain in you. Why? End of verse 4, because no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. The reminder here for, for today, this Monday, is that we are to remain in the vine so that the gardener can prune us to give all the more fruit. So that the gardener can remove those branches that are not in the vine, that die and wither up and produce nothing. And so as we begin this week, I, I want to remind you that we have a great and awesome, a glorious and honorable, a loving and ever faithful gardener who tends to us through the vine, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you are our Father, that you are our gardener. Thank you that you tend to the vine and ultimately through the vine to us. Remove anything in us that would keep us from producing fruit. Help us to remain in the true vine that is Jesus Christ. And then prune us, Lord God. That's a, that's a hard prayer to ask because pruning hurts. But Lord, we want to continue to provide fruit and all the more for you. And so we surrender into this time. We give ourselves to this passage. Teach us this week about your presence. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, it's always a joy to be with you. Certainly do miss you, and I'm very much looking forward to this week together. Until tomorrow, God bless you.